going on guys? Noah here with Northern Scavenger. And we're out here on the eastern shore in mid-August going out to the 100 Wild Islands. We had plans to go to an island that was a little farther out, but the wind seems like it's going to be pretty strong today. So we did a change of plans and we're going to a, a familiar place. This time we're going to be doing some diving and just a good old beach vacation. We want to go right where this guy is. So first look at the ocean, it does look kind of windy, but the swell isn't too bad in this bay. Looking at the wind, it's going to get up to 30 kilometers an hour today, which isn't too bad, but I'm still pretty uh, green when it comes to ocean paddling, so we're going to take our time and not get ourselves into a sticky situation out here. There you go. I'm just introducing you as the character here so people know. Oh. Do you want me to say something? No, you can just be here. <laughs> so we brought a couple of fun things with us. We brought our fishing rods. I brought my wetsuit, a snorkel and fins. The eastern shore of Nova Scotia has some beautiful islands and it's protected by Nature Trust. From an ecological perspective, it's very diverse, both in terms of seabirds and in terms of marine life. I find it crazy, like you can't even see that shelf and then the swell goes and it just like opens up like two feet of rock. We're exposed now. We just got to the beach. There were some swells around that last point. The wind was strong, but it wasn't pushing up a lot of water. Other than that, the wind actually keeps it quite nice and cool out here. For the last two months, it feels like in Nova Scotia, it has been like 30 degrees in humid and hot conditions. And coming out here, there's no sun. There's a nice sea breeze, and it's probably around 18 degrees, which is beautiful, which is my favorite. It's good to be back on the ocean. Comes to the chair. Someone's definitely camped here before. So I think we found a decent camping spot. It's kind of on this peninsula where we have the beach on one side and then we have this rocky spit on the other side. And it's also protected from the wind if winds were to pick up tonight. And there's a fire pit there, there's a grill, there's a tent pad. I think that's the spot.
You almost fell. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's a proper fire pit. So we've been walking around the camp, just kind of getting familiar with the area. And there's one rock right beside the tent that has a bunch of poo underneath. And there is like years worth of poo. So this one animal obviously comes back to the same spot every time it needs to go to the washroom to um, take a dump underneath this rock. Let me know if you guys have any idea what type of poo that is. I have no idea. It's, I don't think it's a rabbit. It could be a weasel. I don't know. So we're on a small spit and we have a rocky shoreline on that side, the beach that we accessed right behind us, and there's a beach on the other side. And over there, it is dead calm. And on this beach, there's a screaming wind. And we're secluded in this area. The, uh, all the trees around us are stopping the wind from coming through the campsite too much. The temperature is perfect. And uh, yeah, there is wind, but we can escape it. Graveyard. Look at the little detail on like ridges. Like the ligaments are still attached in there, like they haven't rotted. It's a million dollar crab. Ultra crab. Camp is all set up. We set up the nice fire pit here. We had some lunch, and now we're gonna go swim on that leeward beach that we were at earlier. I did bring my wetsuit, as well as flippers and a mask, and I plan on doing a little snorkeling. I do have my shellfish harvesting license. You can get it from the DFO office for like 10 or $11. It's very straightforward. But we are in an area where it's off limits to actually harvest the shellfish. But I, I'm still very curious to find one. I've never seen a, a scallop. I've been diving for the last few weeks and it's a lot harder than you expect because they, they go on the bottom and they actually camouflage themselves. And there's a lot of other st stuff going on. You're diving down, there's kelp moving back and forth. Uh, I get disoriented as a uh, Ontario guy being in the ocean. It's a little intimidating. So I'm just gonna see if I can find any. Uh, I'm not gonna touch any, but I just wanted to see if I can locate them as well as potentially any flounder or lobster or anything else that is cool down there. We'll try to find.
some nice water out there, boy. So I just got out of the water and it was awesome. I saw everything that I expected I could possibly see. I saw sand dollars, school of pollock, lobster, starfish, crabs, a flounder, saw a flounder too. Lots of cool stuff down there. It's it's a totally different world once you get below the surface of the water. It's There's all this chop and all this wind, but when you go underneath, it's so peaceful. Very, very cool. Very glad I, I brought my stuff to do that. We are trying to get ourselves some dinner tonight. Didn't bring much meat, a lot of bread and cheese, and I think some pollock will supplement that very nicely. So we're gonna work the shoreline. When I was snorkeling, I did see a few schools of them, so I know they're out there, so we just gotta drop this lure in front of their faces and hopefully Jerry gets one. I say we go for the beach and do some long bombs where I saw them snorkeling. Ah, uh, which way do I go? That looks way too steep to walk on. But it is kind of rigid. But I have the camera. I'm going up. All right, no luck out there. We tried our best. We walked around the entire peninsula. Nothing. I, I caught one small cunner, but in terms of pollock, in terms of having fresh fish for dinner, not going to happen. So we're going to have to go with our, our very limited charcuterie board that involves a little salami and a little brie cheese and some baguette. Not fish, but you know what? We're still eating out here. So we got baguette, salami, brie cheese and two dipping sauces, a Dijon and a olive oil and balsamic vinaigrette. Not sure what the best strategy is for putting this onto the bread, but I think if we just like pour this on, it should be all right. All right, I am pooped. We had a very active day. A lot of activities were done today and just saw a beautiful sunset. Charcuterie was good. It's not too hot. I'm gonna have the best sleep that I've had in weeks. In the city, it is so hot. And coming out here with that ocean breeze, can't beat it. I really don't know how much life I have left to me for the rest of the night. I'll probably fall asleep beside the fire. I have some of my best sleeps out in the woods. Never, we never made it down to Halifax, but we used to go around town looking for like handrails to do. You survived because the, the rail ended. Like it was, it was gonna buck you, but you're just like, you were on it for like a split second. So the weather changed overnight and it is bright and sunny this morning. The wind is a little down, but it looks like it will be picking up today. So we'll probably get out on the water right after breakfast to beat the, the high winds and waves that we expect to happen this afternoon. I slept like a baby. I don't even remember moving around last night. Jared said he got up in the middle of the night to go to the washroom and all the stars were out. All the stars.
cowboy talk is just out of the pot. Typically, just on these overnighters, I don't clean the dishes that well. I just scrape off all the all the excess food and any of the oils, and then I do a proper cleaning when I get back to home. So really, I just use what's around. So in this case, we have seaweed, and I'm just scraping off all the all the gunk. And then when I get home, I'll do a proper soap clean. So we're leaving kind of early today, just packing up camp here. And I just want to share with you guys a quick tip that I learned from Dave Green uh, a couple years ago, actually. So when you're putting away your tent, what I always did was I would put the, the fly down and then, and then the, um, I don't even know what these things are called. I put both layers down and roll them and I do the exact same thing every time. But what that does is it creates creases over time that allow water to penetrate. So it creates areas where, the, where your tent becomes less waterproof. This tip is great because not only is it better for your tent, it's a lot easier to, to put away as well. What you do, you grab your first layer and you just jam her in. Just jam it right into the bottom. And if it rained on us last night and we were gonna do another night tonight somewhere else, I put the fly on the bottom which is the wetter section, and then the other layer on top to keep it relatively dry. But it did not rain last night and we're heading back home today so it doesn't really matter. It's that simple. So we're just finishing up cleaning up a camp here. It is very important when you go camping in the backcountry or anywhere, you always wanna leave it better than you found it. That means do not leave any garbage, clean up after yourself, don't be going to the washroom and not burying your, your supplies. It's very important if we wanna continue going out here and experiencing this beautiful wilderness area to keep it pristine. And that puts the onus on us and you guys when you come out here to do the same. a little farther. I don't like this angle. I think we made it. Nice. Ron, 
on the home stretch now, though. Yeah. 